Hi, welcome to day 12 and the final day of 12 days of single message transform videos and blogs. My name is Robin Moffat, I'm a developer advocate at Confluence and during this series we've looked at some of the different single message transformations that you can use in conjunction with Kafka Connect to change data and its characteristics as it passes through the Kafka Connect pipeline. It could be as you ingest data from a source system into a Kafka topic through a Kafka Connect source connector, you want to drop a field or change a type or rename a target topic. Or as you stream data from a Kafka topic down to a target system, you want to conditionally route messages based on their timestamp, or you want to rename a field, or you want to do any of the numerous things that you can do using single message transforms. Now, Apache Kafka ships with many different single message transforms, but as part of Apache Kafka, it's an open API, so you can go and write your own transformations. So I want to finish off this series by looking at some of the single message transformations that exist outside of Apache Kafka. I've touched already on a couple of the ones that come with Confluent Platform, but now if we head over onto GitHub and just search and see what we can find, there's some really, really interesting ones out there. So I'm just searching for this to see which ones um, extends it and provide the transformation. And you can go through and you can see there's like two and a half thousand. Some of those are just forks of Kafka or forks of existing ones. But if we start poking through them, you can see there's a bunch that are provided by Debezium. Now Debezium is a fantastic project. It provides change data capture from source databases like MySQL and Postgres and Mongo and so on, based on their write ahead logs or transaction logs, streaming data into Kafka. I'm getting distracted. I like Debezium, it's a really good tool. But anyway, Debezium provides additional single message transforms. Some of them are specific to the kind of uh, message that Debezium will write and it will give you a full change record. And so a single message transform is a great little tool to use to say, well, here is the full change record and the value in the database before it was changed and the system change number and all of those kind of things. Sometimes you just want the current state. So there's a single message transform which says, well, here is the message as it's passing through that source connector, the Debezium source connector. It modifies it to just show the current state. And that's what gets written to Kafka. So single message transforms are really, really great bits of architecture within Kafka Connect for building nice, uh, elegant pipelines. So Debezium's got a bunch. And if you start clicking around, you can see there are different projects that implement them. There's one here and there's another one here. This one looks rather interesting. I've not had a chance to try it. And it looks like you can route messages based on their contents and set a flag in the header. And Kafka headers are actually really useful and somewhat underutilized, I think. So you can set that and then you say, if it matches this, then go and do that. So again, really useful, definitely one to go and have a look at. Um, another one over here. But the ones that I want to show you a few examples from are these ones here from uh, Jeremy Custom-Border. So he's a, a colleague of mine at Confluence and these are Apache 2.0 licensed and you can actually install them from Confluent Hub. So some of the ones that you may find on GitHub, you'll have to go and download and do a Maven build and do that kind of stuff, which for plenty of people is fine. But for some people, me included, that kind of like, that's a bit daunting because I'm not a Java type person. I like things that are just built and ready to use. So from Confluent Hub, we can install those connectors and then, sorry, those single message transforms, and then we can actually start to try them out. So let me show you a few of them. So back on the terminal, I've got some data in a topic, and this topic is called day12-sysr1. Let me show you that. So here's my data, and we probably need to run this to actually generate that test data. So throughout this series, I've been using a connector called Voluble, um, again, from another Confluent colleague called Michael Jugalis, and this is a really good way of generating test data into a Kafka topic. There's Kafka Connect Data Gen. This one here is called Voluble, and it lets you specify uh, different types of data to be generated. So Kafka Connect Data Gen is also very good, and you have to build a schema file if you want to kind of customize what goes in with it. Whereas I like Voluble because I can just change it arbitrarily and change the fields and change the types and so on. Anyway, Getting distracted again. So we should now have our topic. We've got a topic here, day 12 dash sys01. So one of the things we might want to do with a single message transform is say, well, this is the topic name that that source connector has written. Now, because I'm using a data generator, I can set that topic name, but let's use our imagination. Plenty of source connectors will write to a fixed topic name. 
And we might say, well, actually, I'd like to use camel case. Or I'd like to do uppercase or lowercase or something like that. So that's what one of these single message transformations from Jeremy does. So it looks like this. We're going to say we're going to take that data and we're going to route it to a sync. So we're going to leave the topic name as it is in Kafka. But when we stream it down somewhere else, we're going to modify it. I could use this transformation on that source connector to change the name of the topic that's actually written to Kafka. Here we're just going to modify the topic name on its way out, which will usually dictate the, uh, the name of the target object. So here we're saying send the data down to the database, GDBC sync connector, data from this topic here. The transformation we're going to use is just one transformation called, I've called it topic case, it's just a label. The type, now we specify the name of the transformation um, that's provided, and we're going to say change it from, it's currently a lower hyphen style, so you've got a lower case with a hyphen separating it, change it to uppercase uh, camel case. And if you're not sure what camel case is, I'll show you in just a moment, because if we head over to MySQL and say show tables, that's what camel case is. So it's where you've got your, like, your capitals, and it looks like a bit like a, a camel with a hump in the middle. So that's one of those transformations. There's other transformations. It's a kind of like a little grab bag of goodies. If you head over to the documentation for it, you can actually see the different transforms that are available. But I really liked this one because in conjunction with other transforms, it's really, really useful. I showed you on a previous day how you can route messages based on their timestamp. And we talked about where that timestamp comes from in a Kafka message. Kafka message uh, timestamps come from either the producer API directly, set by the source application, or set by default to the time at which it arrived at the broker. So that gives you the message and the timestamp, and that's what's used if we use the timestamp router to say, well, change the topic name. Usually it's using a sync connector to say, create a target object using part of the timestamp. So create a table in the database with like year-month or year-month-day or an Elasticsearch index or something like that. But what we couldn't do with the timestamp router as it stood was to say, I've got a field in my data which has got a timestamp. I would like to route the data based on that timestamp, not the message in the Kafka timestamp, but in the a particular field from the data. So there's a nice little transformation from Jeremy which lets us do that. And it looks like this. So what we're going to do is we're going to paste this in and then walk, uh, walk through what we've got. So we're actually using a chain of three different transformations. So the data in my source, let's just uh, clear that quickly and have a look at this. So the data in my source looks like this. So we've got a transaction date here, which has got the transaction date in. And it looks like a timestamp, but it's actually held as a string. And this is important because what we're about to do is manipulate and use that field as the basis for the timestamp router. But we have to work with an actual timestamp. At the moment, it's a string. So we're going to use the timestamp converter to convert that field. We can see here, we're going to convert the timestamp into a timestamp type. Then we're going to extract that timestamp field and set it as the timestamp of the Kafka message. And then we're going to set the topic name based off of that. So the first one is a Kafka a single message transform part of Apache Kafka. And it says, take this particular field here, and this is the format, and change it into an actual timestamp. So convert it from a string into a timestamp type. And then we say we're going to use this uh, transformation here, which is uh, part of the pack from Jeremy, which says extract that timestamp from this field. And it extracts that timestamp and it sets it as the timestamp of the Kafka message. And having done that, we can then say use our third transformation here, set topic name, which is the timestamp router, which says take the timestamp of the Kafka message, which thanks to this transform here is now based on that particular field, the transaction date uh, timestamp. Take that timestamp and set it as part of the topic name. So single message transforms on their own, in isolation, just a single one can be very, very powerful. But where they really come into their own is where you can daisy chain these things like this. And if you look at that, it's like that's a chunk of code and or configuration, whatever you want to call it. But that's all we need to then build a pipeline, which is still just based on kind of like building blocks and plug and play things. We're not having to write additional bits of bespoke code. So we set that running and it says it's been created, which means that if we head over to MySQL now, what we should see 
is a table created with the timestamp suffix and because my data generator is creating uh, data with transaction dates across numerous different days, we should see multiple tables because the different tables will have data for different days. So if we show, show tables, we can see that now. So we've got a topic here, underscore, and then the timestamp, and that timestamp will um, be based on the transaction date field in the payload. And we can validate that. We can say, let's go and have a look at, uh, in this table here, so describe that particular table. It's got a field called transaction date, which by the way is now a timestamp because we set it correctly as part of that transformation chain. And if we say select transaction date from that field, they're all for the 12th of, uh, sorry, the 8th of December because it's used that timestamp as the basis for the object name or the topic name, which is what then dictates the object name. So that's really, really useful. That's like a really powerful set of transformations that we can string together to actually take the timestamp out of the payload. And we used a field called transaction date or transaction time, but it could be any other field that's a valid timestamp in that Kafka message. So we bring it from that field into the Kafka message timestamp uh, metadata field itself. And then the timestamp router uses that to route, change the topic name based on that timestamp. Sticking with timestamps, let me show you another example. We can say within that data, we've got the transaction time, but sometimes you want to keep in that data the time at which it was processed by Kafka Connect. Don't know why, but sometimes you do. Plenty of valid reasons for wanting to do it. So here we can say, well, add in a field holding the current timestamp. It's as simple as that. So we say we want the timestamp now field. Again, this is a transformation from Jeremy. Put it into the value. The field we want to call it processing TS. So we create that again. We're doing it in the sync connector. So creates the sync connector. This time it'll probably just be in that, or it will be in a table named that. So if we go and have a look in my SQL, let's say show tables, we've got a table called that. And if we say describe that table, we can see we've now got a field called processing timestamp, which is a timestamp because it's a timestamp. And if we say select processing timestamp from that table, you can see the timestamp is now. So it's the 17th of December as I'm recording this. And these are the timestamps of all those messages as they're passing through that sync connector. And you can see the timestamp varies a little bit because they're written into the source topic every second or so. So then the sync connector is consuming them every second or so. So that's another connector. Sorry, that's another single message transform as part of those ones from Jeremy. Speaking of Jeremy, he's a very clever chap. He writes an awful lot of really useful things around Kafka Connect. He also writes some really useful con connectors for Kafka Connect. I want to show you one of them now because it's kind of relevant to what we're doing with single message transforms. So what he's written is a simulator for a source or a sync. So the source simulator generates test data. I'm using Volnable for that, but you can use uh, his source one as well. But the sync simulator basically lets you hook up a sync connector it will consume from the topic, it will apply your transformations, but it just writes out to the log, optionally, the actual value that it's ended up with. So instead of, I've been using the database each time and we head over to MySQL and we look at the table and we look at the data, but often you just wanna look at that data in a log file and that's fine because you're just trying these things out. So let's see what that looks like. It looks like this. It's actually one of the, uh, the shortest configurations that I've seen because all we're doing is just saying, create a new sync connector, the connector class is this uh, simulator sync connector. Again, this is on Confluent Hub. So you say Confluent Hub install this particular connector name and it just pulls down the jar file and puts it into your uh, Kafka Connect worker. You can go and download it off GitHub and build it yourself if you want to, but I find it much easier with these things just to use Confluent Hub. So we've got that and then we're saying pull data from this particular topic. We're saying log the entries to true because it can optionally just sit and consume the records without doing anything. Um, and then we're gonna say, we're gonna apply a transformation just to show that it's doing something. Transformation is that same one, processing TS. And we set that running. And if we say, go and have a look at the uh, Kafka Connect API to see the status of it, we can see down here, we've got this one here and that says it's running. So if we now go and have a look at the log file for Kafka Connect, and down here, we can see, if I just pause that, here's our, there's the volleyball, there's that one. So in Kafka Connect, I think it was Apache Kafka 2.3, it 
it was changed that you got much more log context for each of the different connectors. So you've got the prefix here of that connector name. So there's our sync, there's our sync JDBC. So here's our sync simulator. And what it does is it says, well, here is the value. So whereas the JDBC sync one is saying, well, here's some information, some inf uh, about kind of like what I'm up to, the simulator one says, well, I've consumed that record. And we can see within that record, we've got the units and the amount and the original payload, plus this processing timestamp, which has been added in as it passes through. Whilst we're on the subject of logs, let me show you one more really useful thing. So what you can do within Apache Kafka is you can change the log level of a Kafka Connect worker dynamically. This was added, I think, Apache Kafka 2.4, somewhere around then. Um, and it's really useful because you can increase the logging for a particular logger. So instead of saying, restart the worker and set everything to trace, and you just get like screenfuls of like trace information like flowing out your ears and you can't find anything, you can say, well, I know the name of the logger and I'm about to show you a really useful one. Let's set that to trace. Everything else stays as is, but this particular one, let's set that to trace. And it looks like this. So I'm using the bash history search there, which is kind of why it's useful, because I knew it was called transformation chain, but because I've typed it in before, I press control R, I just go and fetch that. And this is what it looks like. We say, go to the Kafka Connect worker, send it, use the uh, admin endpoint, and say for this particular logger here, set it to trace. And when I set that, you'll see the log file at the top there now has these trace messages. And if I pause that, we can see the trace message here says it's applying a particular transformation to the record. So you can actually see the records as they pass through the Kafka Connect single message transforms. So this is what was pulled from that Kafka topic, or this is what came from that source connector before it's being written to Kafka. That brings us to the end of 12 days of single message transforms, blogs, and videos. There's a lot more that I could talk about with single message transforms. I could talk about when you shouldn't use them and you should probably use Kafka Streams or KSQL DB instead. In a nutshell, if you're doing stateful transformations, if you're doing joins and stuff like that, you probably shouldn't even try and write your own, just use Kafka Streams or KSQL DB instead. But there's lots of flexibility. We've seen some of the ones that the community's provided um, that let you do additional things that don't ship with Apache Kafka by default. So please do subscribe to the channel. Please do leave a comment and click the thumbs up or the thumbs button, down button if you absolutely have to, but leave a comment and tell me why. It's really useful getting this kind of feedback. It gives me good direction on what to improve, what to do differently. Maybe also what other videos would you like to see? So do leave a comment again, Make sure you do subscribe and stay tuned for lots more videos about Apache Kafka and Confident Platform.